Hello there guys, it's Maxo Diddly here, and today I am here with another Java tutorial to help you get that A in your practical exam. Today we're going to be here validating a house number. So you may be thinking, oh why are we doing this, why aren't we doing something more like validating a postcode, validating something else, or file handling. We are going to be doing that soon, but I wanted to get this one out of the way as... I feel it is important and you're probably going to need to do something similar or exactly like this. And it's a few easy marks, it's using knowledge you already have, so if you can't solve or figure out how to do it yourself, here's a video on how to do it. But before we start, try and figure out how to do this yourself and then compare it to this video. And if it works, it's valid. See what I did there? Because <laughs> we're talking about validation, I, uh, yeah. I'm going to kill myself. Joking, okay, let's get right into it. So firstly, you may be wondering, okay, Max, why do you have this um, method here? Well, it looks very similar to what one that we did in the previous tutorial. There'll be an I up in the corner if you haven't seen it. I recommend you do if you don't understand it. Basically, we're validating whether or not the input is a valid number, as we don't want a house number to be a word. I mean, you can have that in theory, but we don't want that. So first we're going to make a variable, we're going to call it string, and we're going to call it input. And we're going to set it to 64 from from um, that zoo TV show on CBBS. I don't know, 64 zoo lane, whatever it's called. Ha ha ha, I need to grow up. Okay. Now we're going to have another method in underneath our main method. We're going to do public static boolean, we're going to call it val house. And it's going to take in string, house, no. I'm going to put in our curly brackets. So this is a Boolean method called valhouse. And we're going to take in a string and we're going to call it house, no for this method. And house, no will take whatever the value of input is. So in this case, it takes the value of 64. Now we're going to do one line of code. We're going to have return, so we're going to return a true or a false to whatever the method is called. We're going to do house no dot length is greater than zero and house no dot length is less than six. So as you can see, we've already got a range check and a length check in this, which is really nice, but we get more, don't worry. And val, ha, val number house no and house no dot contains a minus. So you guys might be wondering, okay, what does this whole line of code do? And we're gonna break it down. So firstly, we're getting the length of house number which in this case will be two, so because this is two digits long. And we're seeing, okay, is two greater than zero, which it is. Then we're getting, then we're saying, okay, we've got that sorted, and it needs to match this condition, which in this case, we're getting the house length again, so, it will return, so this will be true, two. And we're checking, is two less than six? And obviously that becomes true as well. We've got another and, Valhouse no... Val, ha sorry, val number house no. What is this? Well, val number is our Boolean method for checking if an input is a number. So basically, we're saying, okay, can we check if house no is actually a number? And obviously, the previous tutorial will explain how it does that. So in this case, 64 is a number. Therefore, this is also going to be true. We got another and, and we're saying if it doesn't contain a minus symbol as we don't want the user to input a negative number for a house number. Because as far as I know, you can't have a negative number. Please correct me if I'm wrong there. And obviously, 64 does not contain a negative number, therefore, it, this becomes true. And obviously, when we have an AND, all conditions must be true for it to be true overall. And obviously, if one of these were false, let's say if we put in... Um, 64, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, this is clearly 7 characters, and that is great, that is greater than um, 5 characters, which is what we're setting the maximum to be. So therefore, this is true, this is true, and this is true, but 
this is false. So therefore, overall, it will return to false. We're going to remove, set this back to 64. Now we're going to do our little if statement. So we're going to do if val house input. I'm going to do j option pane dot show message dialog. Then we're going to do null valid. Uh, oh, we're going to put a semicolon at the end. And then we're going to do an else j option pane dot show message dialog. And then we're going to do null invalid I, I don't care if I mistyped anything I, I'm this is early in the morning I'm, I'm tired oops <laughs> okay so what does this do well it does what we've done in most tutorials we're calling the method and by default if you just put something in an if bracket we're going to be checking if it's true and if you want to do a shortcut for not for if we're checking for a false we could put an exclamation mark before it if you want to you can do it equals true or equals false after, but this is just quicker and I'm trying to make things quick for you in the exam so you can have more time for the other half. So, we're checking if valhouse input is true and we've already explained how this can return true. So if it returns true, we're going to tell them that it's valid because obviously it meets all the requirements for a house number. And then we've got an else statement and we're basically saying if it doesn't meet the requirements for a house number, tell them it's invalid. So let's test this. We're 64 is valid as we expected and we already explained how that works. Let's put in um, Minus no, let's put in um Let's put in a word moo for an example. This will be invalid by the way As you can see it said invalid Which is invalid in um, some language probably don't quote me on that so what, how the, what's happened here? So basically, we passed in the value mu into our valhouse method. Um, we're checking the length of mu, and it is greater than zero, so that becomes true. We're checking if um, the length of mu is less than six, which is also true, as it is three characters long. Then we're checking the. Then we're going to validate to see if um, house no can be create, made into an integer. So we call. Here, we're going to be calling this method. We're going to pass in mu into here. Then we're going to try and convert mu into an integer. And it's going to fail doing it. That, and so it's going to return false. So this will become a false. And then we're going to check to make sure mu doesn't contain a minus symbol, which it doesn't. So that becomes true. So we have a true, a true, a false, and a true. And if you know your logic tables, that means it's going to be false overall. And therefore, say invalid. You can mess about with this, guys. And also, why not check to see if your method, if you did create your own way of doing this, matches this, or at least gives the same output, as it doesn't matter how you do something when you program, as long as you get the right outcome, especially in an exam, you'll be fine. I mean, there are sometimes you might want to do things a certain way, but you get the gist. There are many ways to do this. So thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you did. Um, if you've got any questions, leave that in the comments down below. And yeah, why not share with your friends as well, as this will help us grow. And if we grow, we can have a great community of programmers. I don't know what I'm on about. Anyway, guys, thanks for being a great audience. We'll see you next time.